Welcome to the final of Bright Green's interviews with the deputy leadership candidates for the Wales Green Party. Before we go any further, I just have one request for you, which is that you scroll down right now and hit that subscribe button. It means that you won't miss any of the other interviews that we put out, any of the other videos that we release in the future. It helps Bright Green a great deal as well. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, without further ado, I will introduce our candidate that is with me this evening. It's an absolute pleasure to be joined by Lauren James. Lauren, how are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Yes, doing very well. A little sleepy. Uh, it's the fifth of these that I've done, uh, and thankfully the last, but I'll try and bring the energy that I've had for the others to this one too. Um, <laughs> so I'll start you off with hopefully quite an easy question, um, which is you're uh, the incumbent in this election, re-standing for deputy leader, so why are you standing for a second term? Well, during the 18 months I've been deputy leader, we've seen our best ever Senate election results. I've led the way on diversity and inclusion in the party, including some constitutional changes, which means people of colour are better represented. Um, we've got um, a diversity and inclusion officer coming in. That was a role I created. And I've st stood firm for social justice in the party. It's really my passion. So what I would like to do in the next two years is, in, you know, I'm going to be working to inspire people to vote green, but also to join the party and to become activists, because we know that voting green is essential, but it's also not enough because we need that snowball. So it's going to be about growing the membership, growing our activist base, empowering people from marginalised groups to take part in party life, not only by attending conference and getting more involved with events and stuff like that, but also about standing for election, about standing for internal roles as well, to actually get people running the party from all walks of life. And that is going to help us win seats, not just in the council elections coming up, but it's also going to lay the groundwork for the Senate elections and elections beyond that. So that's what my offer. I really hope that um, your viewers and our members pick me up on it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to be standing again to continue my work as deputy leader. So one of the things you've mentioned there is the set of elections that took place in May. Now, a lot of people had a lot of hope in those elections, but unfortunately the Greens did not gain their first seat in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why do the Greens not break through this year? Um, well, I'm actually going to start with the positives. Um, you know, we did see our best ever Senate election results. We were fourth on the regional list um, nationwide. Uh, we actually beat the Lib Dems and we were actually the only small party to increase our regional vote in Wales. Plaid fell, Lib Dems fell. We were the only small ones to increase our our vote and we doubled our vote actually in South Wales East where I was a candidate. Obviously we had um, a challenging context with Covid, um, I'm not sure if you're aware but um, in the run up to the short campaign of what in what would normally be the tail end of our long campaign we, um, we were actually banned from allowing our activists to deliver leaflets and that was the same for every party for the bigger parties it doesn't matter so much because they get the airtime but as greens we know we have to work harder to make sure residents know what we stand for and what they're voting for and we were unable to do that um, um actually in north wales we had um a local by-election at the same time and they hired contractors to deliver leaflets during that period and those contractors were actually threatened with arrest so it was a really it was a really challenging time and it was more difficult than it ever has been really for us to get our message out there but also i want to draw your attention to the fact that we have a different um electoral context in wales than we do in england um We've seen great success in England in the first past the post council elections, where they have annual or more regular council elections and elections to follow. But actually here in Wales, um, Senate elections and local elections only come around once every five years at the moment. So it's more difficult for us to build that snowball effect. Having said that, I'm, we've still had our best ever election results um, in Wales, I'm really proud of everything our activists achieved. We were really close this time. And, you know, as sad as I am to not see Amelia Womack in the Senate, it's really laid the groundwork for the locals and 
the the mood is different the way our activists are behaving the way we are still getting out on the doorstep making our message heard is really inspiring so yes we don't have a member of the senate right now but it's still left us in a really positive place so you, you've touched on a few things there um, and one of them was that the electoral kind of not, not the electoral system but the electoral cycle is different yeah. in wales than it is in england um but we're in a situation where in northern ireland the greens uh, there have had members of the northern irish assembly for a very long time in stormont um, they also don't have local elections every single year, like in England. Um, in Scotland, the Scottish Greens have had members of the Scottish Parliament uh, pretty much since it existed, um, and also a number of councillors, and likewise, they don't have those annual elections. Um, and in England, uh, whilst there are those annual elections, uh, they're fought under first past the post, which is a much more punishing electoral system than the electoral system for the Senate. Um, so in the in the other nations of the UK, Greens have broken through. Greens have got elected to national and local government. What's going wrong in Wales? Well, I want to pick up on a few things there. Um, firstly, as you say, um, first past the post in England, you know, it is very punishing. And, you know, our local elections a lot, uh, run under the same um electoral system here but it's about building up that snowball effect so when you compare Wales to England specifically if we're not having our annual elections then we're not getting people out on the doorstep and it's not about it's not just about uh, bringing up the message with those residents warming them up to us and letting them know who we are but it's also about getting more experience our activists on the ground who you know, in England may have done several elections on the trot. We're not having that same thing in Wales. I think also um, historically in Wales, there's been um, a reluctance to embrace target to win, or there has been, you know, in years past, um, people think they're using target to win, but when you scrape uh, beneath the surface, you find out that actually they're not following that same process. But also Wales has, fewer staff hours than any English region we have um, on a permanent basis we only have two hours a week two days rather a week of staff time there isn't a single English region with less staff time so what we really need to be seeing is investment from the party um, to reflect the fact that Wales is a nation and not a region so I guess you've been in post for, um, I think it's about 18 months, am I right in that? Or is it two years, right, now? Yeah. 18 months? Um, and you mentioned there the need to invest in Wales. Um, have you been successful in getting the Green Party of England and Wales to invest in the Welsh Greens in, in, in that 18 month period? And if not, how can voters trust that you will in the future? So I would say yes and no. Um, I've been as successful as I can be without having a post on GPEX. Um, sadly, unlike Anthony, I am not on GPEX and so cannot be in the room arguing for that staff time. However, I have pushed, say, the development team to include Welsh people more on the events. I'm actually also supporting the comms team uh, Bearing in mind I am a staff member, but with my dual roles, I've been supporting the comms team to support Wales more. So um, I would say yes, as much as I can. Um, obviously, we had a temporary staff member in the run up to the Senate elections. I would like to see that repeated, but we've got to make sure that when we have money signed off, that the party is actually making use of that straight away. There was actually a delay in between GPEX signing off the money for our campaign managers last year and the recruitment process actually started. So what we need to see is a, big, a better sense of urgency and for the binational party to start taking real responsibility for both nations. We move on to next year's local elections. Mm -hmm. um, so you've already done my usual introduction for me on this, which is to explain the difference between the Wel Welsh and English election system. So uh, <laughs> that's very handy. Um, so in the last uh, local elections in Wales, the Green Party won just one seat. How, as deputy leader, will you ensure the Green Party will win more seats in next year's local elections? Well, I 
actually, I would say that we're already working on that. It's about embracing target to win, you know, the Green Party's flagship electoral strategy, which has seen such great success over the border in England. Um, we've got campaigns already on the ground all over Wales. My own campaign is doing really well. And I know that um, campaigns in other parts of Wales are. We expect to see gains in Cardiff, in the Vale of Glamorgan, Newport Monmouth show in the south, but also in Conry and Ceredigion up in the north, up north and mid even. So actually we're already on our way and what I'm going to be doing is carrying on supporting the professionalisation of the party, in, encouraging council and local parties to embrace the strategies that will help us to win, but also continuing to nudge staff members who have binational responsibility to be supporting both nations effectively so that we can get the support that we need to win. So on a broader subject about the kind of health of the Welsh Greens, um, mm -hmm. over the last few months uh, we've seen a number of uh, relatively prominent members of the Wales Green Party leaving the Greens, um, in some cases joining Plaid, um, including uh, that sole councillor that I mentioned <laughs> a moment ago, Emily Durrant, who has since joined Plaid. Um, we've had uh, list can lead list candidates in last year in this year's Senate election also join Plaid, as well as others leaving the party. You've been deputy leader over that period. Um, what's going on there? Um, it's, it's a bit of a challenging question because uh, there are there are three members in particular I think you're thinking of one of one of whom I can't actually talk about because of an ongoing complaint. Um, the other one left for personal reasons, but um, uh, I can I guess talk more about um, Emily. I'm aware that she was not standing in the council elections next year anyway. The local party was already looking for a replacement. Um, and actually, yeah, it was a shock to us. And I was um, initially quite upset. I have, however, spoken at length with Anthony, who was quite close with Emily, um, but also with our field organiser, with the AGC, to find out what happened. Because um, I think initial reports were that she was quite isolated, that she was unsupported. And actually, as someone who's tried to support women in the party as best she can, I was quite upset if that were the case but actually what I found was and this has actually happened to me that there was support the AGC um, offered support the field organizers been offering support and I was offering support as well and so were other members of council so um, I'm aware that uh, Emily's choice not to stand again was for personal reasons in that she had a new relationship and that she was moving on from the party in general um, what I will say is that our membership is steady. Some members have left, more, mem more members have joined. It, it's a very marginal increase since September in the most recent membership secretary report. So I think there are challenges that the party has got to me. And I think, um, I suppose, without talking about any of the other members specifically, because I know that I can't, I can say that um, we need to do better on including people who aren't straight white middle class men you know listening to the young people in the room listening to the trans people in the room listening to people from marginalized groups and supporting them to take part and it there needs to be a wider culture change here because there are a few of us pushing very hard for it but and until more people at the top get on board, then, you know, people are going to be struggling with sport. I found it really hard to be in the room as well. I guess you've, you, you, what, you've, what, you've, what you've said there kind of, I think, partially addresses this and partially to an extent sort of your suggestion that it's only a small number of people. I guess the, the, the point that I was more trying to make was that it's the, it's it's the nature of the people that have left and, and mm -hmm. this isn't just a short-term thing it's also um you know it was th three years ago where um or, or two years ago I can't remember which where the former leader of the Wales Greens resigned from the from from the Greens the day before the party's conference and joined Plaid and there has been a theme of quite prominent members um, who've stood for the party who are in leadership positions who've been elected mm -hmm. um 
leaving and in, in, in a lot of instances joining Plaid. So I guess moving forward, what can you commit to do to ensure that this doesn't become an ongoing issue? I think the challenging thing is that people um, switch parties for all sorts of reasons. The leader in the, uh, you're referring to, Grenville Ham, and I think it was actually um, three years ago, or four maybe even, if I've got my math right. No, three. Um, uh, he actually left because members voted to remain part of the Green Party of England and Wales. There's, there's nothing I can do there other than commit to listening to the members on that point. You know, and I am committed to ensuring that women are supported in the party, that people in marginalised groups are supported in the party. It needs more people than just myself and Anthony to come on board and we're working on that and it and it is a slow process of a culture change but at the end of the day it's important to recognize that our membership is stable it's actually grown slightly in those last months so you know yes I agree that the people who have left are of um relatively high profile but our activists are doing a fantastic job they're ready to gain seats in the local elections and our membership is stable so we can address the problems but we have also got to recognize the positives as well. So one of the things you've talked about throughout a conversation so far quite a bit is around issues around diversity. Mm -hmm. Now the Green Party of England and Wales has a problem at the moment um, I think that's fair to say when it comes to issues of transphobia and trans rights within the party. Um, some of you also be aware that Sean Berry decided not to restand for um, the leadership of the Green Party of England and Wales. And the reason that she gave was that she um, was specifically around this issue of transphobia in the party. Um, so the deputy leader of the Wales Green Party, you're in a leadership position. You said that you're not on, on GPEX, which is true, but you're still in a leadership position. How do you think that you can step forward and, and, and tackle the issues of transphobia within the party? So I'm going to continue to call it out when I see it. And it's not just about, for, for me, standing up for trans rights is not just about putting a graphic on Twitter saying you support trans rights. If you are in a room and you're seeing trans people being harassed, or if a trans person has come to you and said, I'm feeling harassed, can you help me then? Um, whether you're leader, deputy leader or not, it's your responsibility to act. In my role, I've held people to account. I've ensured that any space that I'm in charge of in my role as deputy leader or any other role that I've had, you know, I've made sure that everybody is held to the code of conduct. And, you know, I that has rubbed people up the wrong way. But at the end of the day, um, if people are feeling harassed, we're here to ensure that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue speaking out when I see it. I'm going to continue making sure that trans people feel supported. And um, I'm going to be working um, with trans people more closely and um, marginalized groups in general, because let's face it, it's not just about trans rights, you know, to make sure that members feel supported, that they feel safe in our spaces, because far too often I've seen it not happen and it's not on. I've got one final serious question for you before mm -hmm. I move on to my slightly more flippant ones. Um, so Welsh politics at the moment is quite a crowded field. Um, obviously, you've got Labour and the Tories have strongholds in their various areas of Wales. Mm -hmm. The Lib Dems still have a member of the Senate. You've obviously got Plaid. And then you've got on the right an association of sort of hard right groups from the Brexit Party to the Rump of UKIP and the Abolished Welsh Assembly Party and so on. And then you've got the Greens. And, and that's a very, very crowded field to, to carve out a political space in. How do you think the Welsh Greens should be pitching themselves in that context? Well, we are the eco-socialists of the bunch. I mean, I know that, um, you know, other parties over the years, not just in Wales, but in the UK as a whole, have um, taken bits of our policies and watered them down to present themselves as, you know, more forward facing, more left leaning. But actually, we are the original party it's it's about the it's about social justice it's about universal basic income which is essentially the policy that got me into politics it's about 
actually standing up to save our planet. And I think voters see that. The fact is that despite this crowded field, as I said earlier, we were the only small party to increase our vote on the regional list. And that was within the challenging context of not being able to get into people's home, into pe well, you know, papers into people's homes rather than not actually standing into them. But also, um, I think in the um, leaders' debates, um, the ones we actually got invited to, um, um, <laughs> Amelia was actually um, voted, I think, either third or fourth overall. So I, I think when voters see us, when voters hear from us, then they are picking up what we're putting down. And it's about um, showing who we are and, you know, really putting forward that bold vision for a green future in Wales. As promised, it's now time for the flippant questions. So what is your favourite biscuit? This is a really tricky one because um, I don't have enough self-control for biscuits. Um, if I buy them and bring them to my house, I will eat them all. I'll, you know, I, I can't have them on my desk. I can't even have them in the kitchen because every time I go and make myself a cup, I'm grabbing more. Um, at my niece's birthday party, there were some Fox's party rings and um, it was one of the only vegan things there. So um, I really loved them at that moment. I think Biscoff um, and what's one of the more boring ones? Rich tea, I actually really like rich tea. They're strangely soothing. There's nothing boring about a rich tea. Uh, <laughs> I'm a very firm advocate for that. What is your favorite pizza topping? Mm, um, well, I don't eat much pizza um, for aforementioned vegan reasons, but uh, I had one recently that had roasted red pepper on it, which makes me sound really middle class. I'm so not. I roasted the peppers myself. They were yellow sticker peppers. But um, actually, yeah, that was probably the best pizza topping I've ever had. Excellent. Uh, cats or dogs? Uh, neither. I've got three children and that's enough um, responsibility in the house as it is. Um, the fluffier the better. Perfect. And your favourite and least favourite Green Party policy? Ha! Well, I touched on this just now, didn't I? Universal basic income is definitely my favourite policy. It is the policy that got me into politics. Um, my least favourite policy? That's not really a light-hearted question, is it? Because there was... <laughs> Um, for me, it's actually, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway, there's a policy coming up um, that we'll be voting on on Sunday in our AGM, which in my view seeks to tone down our anti-discrimination stance. So um, I'd encourage any Welsh members who watch this actually to make sure they come to the AGM on Sunday and have their say on our policies. I'm going to be speaking against it. Um, you know, I think it's unfortunate that policy committee have put forward and um, yeah, I think we really need to take a strong stance against discrimination in all its forms. So anything else that infringes on the rights of marginalised people just has to go. Excellent one. Uh, what book has most shaped your politics? Um, donut economics, but... Um, I don't make anywhere near enough time for reading. So if any of your readers have any book recommendations, particularly of the eco-socialist or intersectional leaning, then if they can leave a comment down below, I'll come back and check and um, make sure I read some. Do you want better? We have a resource guide on our website um, on eco-socialism, which has five videos, five articles and five books to read on eco-socialism. And there's a whole Fantastic. bunch of other resource guides as well on other topics. So thank you for the plug. My final question <laughs> for you is who in the Green Party inspires you the most? Oh, well, I mean, obviously, there's the obvious one. Um, and I won't name her because um, I've caught a couple of the other interviews and I think everyone else has. <laughs> I would say for me, it's the young woman, it's the young bold woman in the party. It's Carla Denya, it's Amelia Womack. Um, and yeah, I really want to see more bold young voices coming forward and yeah, just pushing forward what we believe in. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining me this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much.
So that is the end of our interview. And sadly, it's the final of our interviews with the Depth Leadership candidates for the Wales Green Party. But don't despair. If you've missed any of the previous ones, you can head to our YouTube channel now. There's probably something floating somewhere around my head, which you can click on and find all of the other interviews to watch too. I have a final few bits of admin to do before you all leave. The first of them, you know what I'm going to say. I said it at the beginning. Scroll down right now and hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a massive deal, but it also means that you won't miss any of the videos that we put out in the future. The second thing I need to tell you to do is to learn about Bright Green. And the thing I want to tell you about Bright Green is that we don't have the backing of billionaires. We don't have big business donors. We're exclusively funded by wonderful people like you. So if you are able to, we ask people to donate just five pounds a month, depending on where you live in the country, that might be one or two pints. Um, but we ask you to donate just five pounds a month and that will enable us to put out more videos like this to run all of our coverage of the UK's green parties, of the labour movement, social movements and the wider left. So if you are able to, please do head to bright-green.org forward slash donate. The final, final, final thing to tell you is that if you are a member of the Wales Green Party, make sure that you vote. As I said before, you can watch all the rest of our videos, uh, our interviews with the other candidates. Watch those. The, the ballot should be arriving with you soon, I believe. If it hasn't already arrived, I don't think it has. Um, then make sure you vote, watch all the interviews, get informed and vote in that election. So that's everything for me. It's been an absolute pleasure as always, and I'll see you very, very soon.